In this chapter, we will displace and sculpt our pendant in ZBrush with the masks we created in Photoshop in combination with some powerful deformation tools, as well as some of the default brushes and the surface noise feature. Additionally, we will use ZBrush's Mask by Cavity and Mask by Peaks and Valleys tools to extract dirt and edge masks for surfacing our pendant. Lastly, we will use Decimation Master to create our final production mesh. Alright, so back in ZBrush, let's go ahead and import that um, new mesh that we just extracted from 3D Studio Max. And by default, I already have my group showing. At this point, I don't need to like regroup anything. We're actually ready to start sculpting on this. So what we're gonna do is just come in here under Geometry. Let's divide this. Now you can see the edges are getting soft. And this is okay, I want these soft a little bit. I need to get this up into the millions up here. So um, 700,000. 2.818 million. I think this will be about enough uh, to get the detail we need. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use those masks that we created to create some of the displacement patterns on this. So let's um, pull over the alpha section here. Let's drag this down on this sidebar and uh, let's import some of our masks. So remember we have the Celtic mask and we have the gem mask. Let's do the Celtic one first. And then we need to just hit flip V. So now this is flipped. Let's just minimize this. And then come down here to masking and say mask by alpha. And now you can see our alphas all super nice on here. And I mean, you could start sculpting this if you wanted. Oh, watch out for that. It'll drop this in here. Um, you could do something like this and suddenly the shape starts to pop. But what I like to do because I've already spent the time doing these nice um, transformations here is I'll actually go through and use the deformation panel here. And I like to use inflate balloon. This one, um, I usually don't drag the time slider or the slider here because it's quite heavy unless you have a really good computer. So I just click on this. And I'm gonna give it a low setting of like maybe three. And we'll just give it a second to process. It takes a minute here. My computer's a little bit older. I need to upgrade this. And then now you can see we got the um, nice kind of displacement that came out already. It's almost like we did the sculpting for free. And then because we did that nice little fade off underneath, we're automatically getting that nice um, under weld in here. And if I had done pure black on the bottom, it would meet on the very bottom, but I did kind of like a, a gray shaded version. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it out just a little bit further with the inflate. Not the inflate balloon, but the inflate. So let's do this one at like six. This will go a little quicker. It's a little too extreme right here. So let's change it to like three. And that feels pretty good to me. I mean, it's pretty much sculpting for free. I love it. That's why I spend time doing UVs and everything else when I do something like this. Um, especially with this kind of rounded shape, you know, that'd be pretty hard to do. So let's clear the mask, control and clear the mask like that. And then now let's get those um, pieces here for setting the gems in. So let's import our gem mask. Open that up, remember to flip this. And again, let's go back to our masking. Mask by alpha. And now we have it on the edges here. So we're gonna do pretty much the exact same thing under the deformation panel. Let's do inflate balloon first. This one we'll do a little more aggressively. Let's try like a five. I think this will go a little quicker just cause the design's not as complex. All right, so that's pretty good. And then also remember, because we did that nice blur, the edges roll off really, really nicely here. So let's give it a little bit more with this inflate. Let's do like a five. All right, cool. It's almost like we have a little octopus tentacles, but this is really nice. Feels like a, a soldered edge that would go around a gem. And in fact, let's go a little bit more with it. Uh, maybe like a three. Cool. This will give us some space to set some gems. So let's clear this mask. And now at this point, um, we have what is basically kind of like a really uh, clean gem, or sorry, uh, necklace type thing going on here. Uh, I'm gonna turn off this alpha just so I don't forget later. And now let's go ahead and add some noise into this because right now it's just too clean, looks like it came straight out of the press and we want this to feel like it's been on someone a while. So let's pick surface here and noise. This is a pretty cool technique I picked up from another amazing environment artist named David Lesperance, uh, one of his videos. So you can just zoom in here pretty closely. 
And this is this little frame here works just like your viewport in uh, ZBrush. So we're going to do this based on 3D setting. Let's crank up the noise scale a bit. Obviously, this is too noisy. It feels like concrete. So this is where we're going to mess with these noise curves. And right now, it's additive. You can't really tell that. That means that it's going to like add um, displacement on top of the surface. So I'm just going to invert this pretty much. And then now let's add a point or two in here. Okay, and let's scale this up just a bit. Uh, that might be good. Whoa, we lost our guy here. That's right, let's say okay. And let's say apply to mesh. And now that's actually on our mesh, so now we have some nice kind of uh, noise in here for free that feels like a little bit of weathering. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press B. I've got a ton of brushes in here. It's because I put all, all of my brushes uh, that I have in a thing, but I'm going to use just the default brushes in ZBrush. So Clay Buildup's one of them. Let's use that one. We'll pick that one. We're just going to invert this. Let's turn the brush size down a bit. We're just going to go in here and cut out some of this so it feels like it's been damaged. I mean, you could really spend a lot of time and go in here and um, really, really finesse it. But just remember, you know, only do as much as you're going to see all the time, like when I'm at work and stuff, people will want to put all these super tiny details and things like this. Maybe, you know, it's a necklace on a character, it's on a background thing, and you never see it. So, you know, sometimes you want to be careful how much detail you put in. But for us, this is personal artwork, so we can do whatever we want. So you guys can spend hours on this if you'd like to. Uh, for the sake of this demo and keeping things moving and not boring you guys too much, we're just going to do a couple of these, not too many. Let's do some on these bottom pieces just because this line is so clean. And don't forget the back. Let's get some on the back. We'll scale this up a little bit. You could do some smaller ones here to kind of go nicely with the uh, different part you have here. You can then press Alt if you wanted to get it to rise around the edge, like inverting your um, settings here. You get the idea. So you can just keep doing that to your heart's content. Um, let's go ahead and add a couple slashes on here. I'm going to press B again, and I think you guys should have one here that's just called slash. So let's click that, but let's change it from freehand to drag rectangle. I know that 47 is too strong, so I'm going to turn this down. And then we can kind of drag out some cuts here as if like, you know, something's maybe scraped across the surface from time to time and banged some of these edges. And that drag rectangle is nice because it just allows you to kind of do like this. If it was free transform, you can draw all over the place, but I don't really want to do that. I just like the idea of a, a couple slashes here. I mean, honestly, we don't have to do too much more. If any of you guys watched my Nelman demo, um, this next piece I didn't even do, but since we have a little more time here, let's look for a uh, polish feature. I think it's down here, polish hard. You may have to load this one up separately if it's not in there. Uh, but this one's kind of nice. You can use around um, edges here to, you know, if it's too soft here, you can do this in places to kind of make it feel a little bit more planar. if you wanted to feel like the edges got uh, a little bit blunt. And it works based off the normals. This one's a pretty nice one. I know a lot of our artists really enjoy using this one. So 
so yeah, just a polish hard brush. So just this in combination with that uh, clay tubes brush and then um, that slice brush, you can get some pretty good results. I've got a lot of custom brushes that can do some really, really nice things, uh, but you guys don't have those probably on your computer. So uh, let's just stick with the stuff that you guys do have and that you can use. All right, so now we have a pretty good setup here. Let's go ahead and uh, save this just in case something crashes. That would not be good. Um, yeah, whatever. We'll just call it whatever default name it is. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this. And then I'm going to extract some masks. Masks that I'm going to extract are going to be like a cavity map for creating dirt and then some peaks and valleys for uh, creating edge highlights. Basically, uh, if you look at this video again, in here where it gets dark, um, this will be our cavity map, and then you can see these edges where it gets kind of nice and bright. That's basically a peaks and valleys map. So whenever we put this into my layered material in uh, V-Ray, um, all those masks will help make this come together as a cohesive piece. So back here, um, mask by alpha. Let's do mask by cavity first. So we'll just use the default setting that's here. This is pretty strong. So let's turn this blur up just a bit. Let's try this again. Maybe turn the intensity down. Ooh, that's too much. I, I do like it to feel a little bit dirty. I think this is good enough. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you the alpha section here again because what we're gonna do is click create alpha. Now what you can see is it's actually created a nice alpha mask for us uh, based off that cavity map. And because we kept all the UVs on our asset, uh, we can actually export these now. So, but before we do that, since it's upside down, just like when we flipped the UVs before, let's flip them again. So let's flip V, or not flip UVs, flip the template, and export this. And we'll call this one, let's change it to TIFF, we'll call this Dirt. And then let's do another one, but let's do this by peaks and valleys to try and get some nice edge highlights. And although it's dark, what we're actually trying to get in here and simulate in this one, hmm. Sorry, I'm just thinking about what I want to do here. Basically, I'm hoping to kind of get some nice edge values right here. I just wish it wasn't dark right down here. I think that's pretty close to what I want. Let's crank that up just a bit more than 12. Sixteen, maybe that's a sweet spot. All right, so hopefully this will give us some kind of nice um, edge highlights. So let's go ahead and create alpha again. And remember, let's flip that one more time and export that. We'll call this one bright for bright metal. Let's save that. And the next thing that we need to do is actually get this back into 3D Studio Max. So we're gonna decimate this because I don't wanna have to deal with baking maps, things like that. Um, this is a personal piece of artwork. I, I can just create a decimated mesh. So let's click on this other duplicate that we made and let's expand our Z plugin, which I've already got over here that I dragged over earlier. Turn on Decimation Master. Make sure you turn on Keep UVs, that's not on by default. So turn that on and then by default, it's a decimation of 20%. I'm gonna put it down to like maybe 10. And then you need to pre-process pre current before you can do this. So what it's doing now is it's analyzing the mesh. You can see up here what the status is. If you have a really fast computer, this will go really fast. If you have an older one like me, it'll take a little bit longer as you can see here. So thanks for being patient with me a second. 
Yeah, a lot of uh, studios that you work at, you can't use a decimated mesh, meaning you would have to take the lower to poly, to poly, uh, lower to poly <laughs> topology version of this thing, and you would bake down the displacement maps on top of it, and then your displacement maps would um, tessellate your geometry at render time and create this displaced look. But a lot of studios, when things don't deform, you can just use um, decimated meshes. And that's what I like to do because uh, it gets you a really good result and you don't have to spend uh, calculation time at render time displacing. So we're almost done here. And now that it's actually processed, now you have to do decimate current. This part's a lot quicker. Now if you press Shift F, you can see that this is all the geometry that's left behind. And this is pretty clean. It's good. So let's export that. to max. And then we can uh, wrap this up. So let's save this and go back into 3D Studio Max.